York City, 1904, the New York Fire Department responds to a call at the Manhattan Adventurer's Society, where smoke is seen billowing from a room. As a firefighter grasps the doorknob, the smoke is suddenly sucked back into the door frame, causing his hand to freeze. They break down the door to find a room filled with frozen corpses and an eerie phonograph playing an unknown language. In the shadows, a mysterious figure holds an orb containing an ancient evil. As the orb opens, the bodies shatter, and a pair of eyes emerges from within. Present day, the Spinglers, Callie, Carrie Coon, Phoebe, McKenna Grace, and Trevor, Finn Wolfhard, along with Mr. Gruberson, Paul Rudd, have relocated from Somerville to Manhattan to become full-time Ghostbusters. They are pursuing a ghost known as the Sewer Dragon through the streets. Trevor nearly traps it, but it escapes until Callie deploys a drone trap to capture it. However, Gruberson crashes into a rack of city bikes during the chase. The family then encounters the Ghostbusters' old adversary, Walter Peck, William Atherton, now the mayor of New York City. He scolds them for the city's damage caused by their ghost hunting activities and criticizes them for involving Phoebe, who is still a minor. The incident makes headlines, casting the Ghostbusters in a negative light once again. Meanwhile, Gruberson attempts to bond with Phoebe and Trevor as a surrogate father figure, but Phoebe remains hesitant. Despite this, Callie continues to support Gruberson in his efforts. The Ghostbusters return to their headquarters, which is being bankrolled by Winston, Ernie Hudson. They are visited by Janine, Annie Potts, just as they are adding the Sewer Dragon to their containment unit, which is almost a struggle since the containment unit has reached maximum capacity. Meanwhile, Trevor spots green slime from upstairs and goes to find a mountain of junk food. He then meets Slimer, who flies through Trevor and covers him in goo before he disappears. Ray, Dan Aykroyd, and podcast, Logan Kim are now trying to use artifacts from other customers to try and forge a connection to the afterlife for their new online show. A woman uses a watch from her late husband for Ray to try and read, but he gets nothing and podcast just smashes the watch with a hammer. They are visited by Nadim Rasmati, Kumail Nanjiani, who brings them the same orb scene in the beginning. Ray tries to use his PK meter on it, but the energy emitted from the orb causes a surge that breaks the meter. Phoebe plays chess by herself in the park, when one of the chess pieces start moving on their own. She is met by a ghost girl named Melody, Emily Allen Lind, who died in a tenant fire and always appears with small flames. She tells Phoebe that she isn't very confident about her chances of crossing over. After chatting with Phoebe, Melody is later seen out on the streets on her own, speaking to a growling voice and asking if Phoebe is really the one he wants for his plan. The family arrives at a ghost research facility that Winston has also funded, with parabiologist Lars Pinfield, James A. Castor, having been hired. Lucky, Celeste O'Connor, is working there as well, and she reunites with Trevor. They bring the orb, which Lars notes that the other captured ghosts in there have become drawn to. Later, the facility experiences a power surge when Lars tries to extract the energy source from the orb, and when Lars goes to grab the orb, his arm is nearly frozen off. The Ghostbusters get a call, so Phoebe and Podcast go to investigate. They arrive at a diner, where they find Melody is the ghost that is bothering people. Podcast gets ready to have her trapped, but Phoebe cannot bring herself to do it. The team visits Nadim at his shop for further information on the orb. A PKE meter indicates that Nadim himself has spiritual energy. Lars and Lucky bring Nadim to Vinkman, Bill Murray. For further research, and it is discovered that Nadim has the ability to manipulate fire whenever Vinkman starts to get him angry. Melody visits the firehouse and continues chatting with Phoebe, who shows her the facility and the containment unit. She also takes interest in the orb, and notes a strange language coming from it. Phoebe and Podcast join Ray in going to the New York Public Library to learn more about the orb's origins. They meet an expert named Dr. Hubert Wartsky, Patton Oswalt, who explains it for them. Centuries earlier, a power mad king sought help from a powerful entity called Garaka in his conquest, but Garaka had his own plans to use his powers to bring forth a new Ice Age. A team known as the Firemasters, Nadim's ancestors, used their powers to imprison Garaka in the orb and steal his horns that gave him his power. If Garaka becomes free once more, New York would experience the death chill built from their fear. 
The orb then starts to emit the same language heard earlier. As the team starts leaving, a ghost that stowed away with podcast goes loose around the library, forcing the three to chase it. Ray even runs into the original library ghost from the very first movie, at one point, and is still spooked by her. The ghost then makes its way outside and possesses the lion statue fortitude outside the library. Phoebe uses her proton pack to fire a stream and destroy it, just before the cops arrive. Peck uses this as another good reason to come down on the Ghostbusters and try to get them shut down for good. He has the firehouse condemned and has their equipment repossessed. Phoebe is also arrested for refusing to comply with Peck, while Winston chastises Ray for getting her and podcast in trouble. Melody visits Phoebe again as she wants to be alone. After they talk some more, Phoebe decides to use a way for her and Melody to be on the same physical plane, by having Phoebe briefly separate her spirit from her body for two minutes. The procedure works, and Phoebe becomes a ghost, but this is when Melody reveals her true intentions. She is working for Garaka, who cannot use a ghost like her to open the orb, so he needed a living person, Phoebe, to do the job for him, in exchange for helping Melody cross over to be with her family. He possesses Phoebe's body to speak the incantation, and the demon ghost comes back to life. Phoebe's spirit returns to her body as the rest of the team tries to help her. Lucky tries to fire a proton blast at Garaka, but he freezes and shatters the stream. Callie and Gruberson help Phoebe while Ray, Winston, and Janine also arrive. They realize Garaka is going to try and free the other ghosts for his death chill plan to take effect. Outside in the city, Everything starts to freeze over and produce hundreds of deadly icicles that nearly kill people. Everyone makes it to the research lab to get equipment before Venkman and Nadim join in the fight. Ray tries to get Nadim to find a way to tap into his Firemaster abilities to help fight Garaka. Meanwhile, the Possessor Ghost comes back and tries to kill everyone by possessing a Proton Pack, but Nadim is able to redirect the blast out the window with his powers. The ghost then possesses pizza and is promptly devoured by Slimer. Lucky tells Phoebe that regular proton blasts won't be enough against Garaka. So Phoebe lines her blaster with brass since it is similar to the orb's material that can trap Garaka. The demon ghost makes his way to the facility, and the Ghostbusters' efforts against him remain futile, and he is almost all of them trapped in ice. Nadim tries to use his fire powers on Garaka, but he has run out of lighter fluid since he was practicing with it a lot. Downstairs, Phoebe talks to Melody, who is remorseful of her actions, but Phoebe tells her that Garaka was never going to help her cross over like he said, and that she had the ability to do that herself all along. No, no, no.